Hello and welcome to Cards by Kendra. It's a new year and it's time for a new quarterly card making challenge. If you're not familiar with my quarterly card challenges, it's where you use the cutting templates and card sketches that are provided in my free PDF file to create a bunch of cards using just six sheets of six inch by six inch pattern paper. For this challenge, you can make 15 cards. The new free PDF download is now posted on my website and I will link it in the description box below. Of course, you'll also need some matching colored cardstock and card bases, and you can decorate the cards with whatever stamps, dies, or embellishments you'd like. Now, this is not company specific, so you can use whatever crafting supplies that you have, and it's open to card makers worldwide. So to enter the challenge, just post pictures of your cards on social media using the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 5, and you can enter to win some amazing prizes. We have more prizes to be won this quarter from some really awesome companies who have offered to sponsor challenge number five, plus some goodies that I'll be giving away myself. A complete list of prizes are posted on my website. Now let me explain how this works, but first I wanna invite you to subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And don't forget to turn on those notifications so that you won't miss any of my videos. Let me show you the printout of the PDF file. These are the cutting templates for the six sheets of pattern paper. And as you can see, they are color coded. The first two here that are green and pink are labeled as paper A and B. And this is the second sheet here with yellow and blue. And this shows the cutting templates for paper C and D. And then the last two, the purple and the orange are papers E and F. All of the measurements are listed for each piece. And I have scissors on each template to show which part of the paper needs to be cut first. And I'll show you that here at the end of this video. There's circled numbers on each piece, which indicates which card sketch that the piece goes with. And here's what all of the card sketches look like. There's a total of 15 cards for this challenge, as I mentioned earlier. And there's also arrows on each piece to show the direction of how it will, it will be placed on each of the card sketches. You will notice not all of the pieces go the same direction. So for this particular challenge, you will want to use patterns that are non-directional, meaning that it doesn't matter which way you turn the paper. So for example, if you have a heart pattern and you don't want it to be upside down on your card, um, you will definitely want to pick something different. Now you can turn the card sketches if you'd like. You know, you can turn them landscape or portrait, whatever the opposite is, just to make it work and to make this challenge easier. But I would definitely recommend picking patterns where you don't have to worry about which way it faces. Now these striped areas on paper C will be scraps and of course the little triangles where you're gonna cut out the banners on a few of these pieces. And there's also instructions on the bottom of the last page with some helpful hints. You can use colored cardstock to create your mats for any card sketches that call for them. And to keep costs down, remember you can cut smaller mats from larger mats that will be hidden behind the pattern paper. I also wanted to mention that I have a printer-friendly version of the cutting templates available for download separately if you want to save on some colored ink. Now once you have all of your pieces cut, you'll want to sort out your pieces by sketch number. And I like to use cellophane bags or envelopes to keep my pieces together and then I can match up my cardstock and card bases later and decide how I want to decorate them afterward. So I'm going to show you a quick flip through of the pattern papers that I used to make the cards for this challenge using the Very Merry Paper Pad by Sunny Studio. This pattern paper is available for purchase as of the date of me filming this and I'll link it in the description box below. There's two double-sided sheets of each pattern in the paper pack, and these first few patterns are ones I decided not to use for this challenge because of the pattern being directional. Even though there are a lot of Christmas patterns, there's some other pattern patterns in here that can be used for other types of cards, like the striped pattern here that I used for paper F. Same with the green checkered backside. Now I use this Santa pattern paper for paper A, and even though the back side of this sheet has hearts on it, which is directional, I'll show you what I did with the hearts when I show you the cards here shortly. I used the diagonal stripes for paper B, and then I used the snowflakes for paper E, and then the um, for paper D I used this candy cane pattern. And I didn't use the Christmas lights pattern for any of these cards, but I did use the colorful polka dot pattern with the green back side for paper C. 
I'm using a variety of products for these cards because I wanted to have more than just Christmas cards since the holiday season is over with and Valentine's Day is coming up pretty soon. Now I've already glued down a lot of the pieces that were pretty self-explanatory, but I will share my process of how I decorated each of these 15 cards. This is card sketch number one, and the two pattern papers in the middle were the stripes from paper B and the hearts from paper A, and I used yellow cardstock for mats. I stamped these cute little gnomes from the Whimsy Stamps Gnome One Like You stamp set, and I colored them with Copic markers off camera and I fussy cut the image out and for the sentiment I used a sentiment strip from Simon Says Stamp that says you are my happy and because the edges of the strip are white I took my black Copic marker and I ran it along the sides so that the white didn't stand out and then I glued the pieces down using some Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. I added some Nuvo Crystal Drops and Morning Dew to the heart hanging from their hats and then I added some heart shaped rhinestone stickers to add some bling to finish it off. This is card sketch number two, and I ended up having to turn this sketch to be landscape rather than portrait because of the heart pattern that I used in the center piece to make this a Valentine's Day card. I used these heart dies I've had in my stash to go across the bottom that I cut from pink and red cardstock and I glued them down off camera. And I used the So Talkative stamp set from Simon Says Stamp for the sentiment that says, can't help loving you, sending you so much love. And I stamped it onto a stitched oval piece that I cut from white cardstock. And then I used the slightly larger die to cut out a pink frame. And these are from the stitched oval die set from Pink and Main. And then I finished this card off with some colored hearts in pink, red, and yellow. And then added some ice glaze stickles glitter glue on top to add some sparkle. This is card sketch number three. And it has those same pattern pieces as the last card. I'm again making this a Valentine's card. I used the Spotlight Sayings One stamp set by Pink and Main for the sentiment that says love you more. And I stamped that on a white two inch circle that I used a two inch circle punch for. And I used the heart circles die on red cardstock for an added layer. And then I placed that on top of a two and a half inch circle that I cut using a circle punch from yellow cardstock. And I used that for the bottom layer to make those hearts stand out a little more. And then I finished this off with a red heart rhinestone also. This is card sketch number four, and this one is very colorful. I used yellow cardstock for the layer on top of the card base. If you find that all of your patterns don't coordinate well, you can replace some of these pieces with just colored cardstock since there are so many pieces on here. Now these patterns all matched and worked together with my particular paper pad. And I used the other sides of the papers for the banner pieces, but it may not always work out. So just remember, you can make adjustments if you need to. I used the snowflake images from the Snow Sweet stamp set by Pink and Main that I stamped in different colors with the sentiment that says warm wishes. And I stamped that on the white rectangle piece. And then I stamped, cut out, and colored the little girl snowman with Copic markers off camera. And I added that to the bottom right hand corner. And then you'll see me use the Nuvo Crystal Drops and Morning Dew and the Ice Glaze Stickles on a lot of these cards. So I won't keep posting it up on screen or, screen or mentioning that. But I just, I used both on this one to add some sparkle and shine to finish off the card. Now this is card sketch number five and it's a pretty simple design. I used the Santa pattern with red and white layers at the bottom of the card base. And I thought this Santa Mini Shaker Stamp and Die Set by Art Impressions matched the paper really well. And I decided to make it a wobble card for this one. I stamped Ho 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 with red ink on the top left corner of the card base. And then I colored and die cut my Santa off camera. And I cut his mustache whiskers out of white heavyweight cardstock twice to give it more durability since that's the piece that moves. And then I added the action wobbler to the back and this is the finished card. Now this is card sketch six, and I made this one a birthday card. I used the celebrate sentiment from the stamp set that came in the Simon Says Stamp Birthday Bash Limited Edition kit that came out a few months ago, and I layered it with some red card stock. And the balloons are some 3D stickers that I bought from Michaels a while back. They match the colored dots in the pattern paper. And then I used some red and white baker's twine for the strings of the balloons. 
and then I tried to glue them down with the liquid glue um, it didn't really work so well but uh, I decided to make a bow and attach that to the bottom and I attached that with a glue dot The top part of Card Sketch 7 says you can use an embossing folder or stencil to create any type of pattern on the top part of the card. And since I used an embossing folder, I didn't want to emboss directly on my card base. So I cut a piece of red cardstock and I used the Snowfall embossing folder on this 4 by 5 and a quarter inch panel. Next, I glued down the candy cane pattern piece directly on the bottom. And then I glued down a half inch strip of pink cardstock across the top. I used some tag punches from my stash to punch out a white tag and a slightly larger red tag for the layer. And I stamped the little sleigh from the holiday postage stamp set from Whimsy Stamps and the little sentiment that says season's greetings. And I used my crocodile to punch out a little hole at the top of the tag after gluing them together and then I ran the baker's twine through the hole to create a bow and then I glued this down on top and trimmed off the ends of my twine and this finishes off card number seven. For card sketch number eight I used the Christmas Gnomes stamp set by Simon Says Stamp plus the Polaroid die by MFT Stamps and the sentiment from the holiday postage stamp set by whimsy stamps that i showed earlier i used all of these to make this particular card i layered up the candy cane strip on some red cardstock and i wrapped the red and white baker's twine around it to create a bow before i glued it down onto the card base and i took one of the extra pieces of pattern paper out of that paper pad to cut out a green piece that has those christmas images on the back for the background rectangle piece. And this is glued behind that red Polaroid die cut. Now I stamped the Merry Christmas sentiment with some Versamark ink and I added white embossing powder on top and I melted it off camera. And also off camera, I stamped, colored and cut out the gnome. And then I glued him down and added a white puff, a little puff ball to the top of his hat. And at first I tried using liquid glue to glue it down but when I realized that that wasn't working I decided to use a glue dot instead and that worked perfectly and I think this turned out really cute. For card sketch 9 I used a few stamps for this one too. The sentiment holiday wishes came from the circle sentiments Christmas stamp set by Simon Says Stamp and the snowflake images came from the snow sweet stamp set by Pink and Maine. I used some yellow ribbon and I wrapped it around the top corner of the square and then I secured it down on the back with some tape. And then after I had the, that piece of the ribbon down, I made a bow and uh, I glued the piece down, making sure to line up the corners of the square along the seam of where the patterns come together. And then I added that bow down with a glue dot. Card Sketch 10 uses a full panel piece that measures 3 and 3 quarter inches by 5 inches. In this one I used the snowflakes pattern. I stamped a few of the snowflakes on that white strip and I layered it with some pink cardstock. And again I'm using the Snow Sweet stamp set by Pink and Maine. Now for the sentiment I used a word and shadow die that I've had in my stash that says Christmas greetings. Since it was small enough to fit inside the pink oval piece. Um, I cut this out using the oval lily frame die set by TLC Designs. And since I'm layering this on top of that strip, I needed to cut out another oval layer and then re remove a three quarter inch piece from the middle so that it would lay flat on the card. And of course, I added my usual finishing touches with the Nuvo Crystal Drops and Stickles. For card 11, I used the Gnome One Like You 
stamp set by Whimsy Stamps again for the cute gnome holding the little heart balloon that I colored and cut off camera. Now for the rectangle piece, I used the Crafters Essentials 1 die set from Cat Scrappiness to cut out the blue die cut that would allow me to place the three rectangle pieces behind the blue frame. And then I used the reverse sentiment strip from Simon Says Stamp that says I really adore you to go across the bottom. Now, of course, you don't have to have this die set to make this card. You can cut the rectangle piece using the measurements shown on the sketch and just place the three rectangle pieces on top. Now for card sketch 12, I cut out a red cardstock layer and then I glued it down at an angle and then I glued the striped pattern piece down on top and I turned it at the other angle and then I added another layer of red on top in the center and then on the white rectangle piece I stamped the sentiment the sky is the limit from the hooray stamp set from pink and main toward the bottom and then I added this beautiful 3D hot air balloon sticker by Jolie's Boutique and this finishes off this card and I think this is probably one of my favorites card sketch 13 I stamped warm wishes from the snow sweet stamp set and I used the cozy critter stamp set for the little rabbit image both are by pink and main and I cut out some snowflakes from some MFT snowflakes dies in different colors and I placed them toward the top of the card base and then I added some starlight gems by pink and main using my sparkle stick and I added those to the centers of the snowflakes to add some shine. For card 14, I used the MFT Stamps Happy Birthday Circle Frame Dynamics to cut out the frame out of the same blue heavyweight cardstock that I used for my card base. And I used the Circle Shaker Pouches by MFT and glued the Happy Birthday frame on top. I glued down the blue center circle piece first on top of that pattern paper and then I added some of the sequins and bits from the Gummy Bear Sparkle Blends from Doodles Paper Playground and I put that on top of the blue circle. Now the little Gummy Bear pieces were a little too big to go in this pouch but they are super cute and I just love this blend. To attach the circle pouch to the card I lined the outer bottom edge of that little plastic piece with some 1 8th of an inch score tape all, all the way around but I thought another little sentiment was needed across the bottom on that yellow cardstock strip so I cut out a sentiment strip that said put on your party pants and let's celebrate I didn't cut it too straight with my paper trimmer so I tried to fix it with my scissors but this is card number 14 And now for the last card, number 15, this one is pretty straightforward. I used an embossing folder from the Birthday Bash Kit by Simon Says Stamp, and I used that on the yellow cardstock layer, and then I glued down the paper pieces to look like stacked presents like it shows on the card sketch, and I added a sentiment strip that says Happy Belated Birthday along the bottom. Now one of the colored pieces had a pattern facing the wrong way, so rather than replacing it with solid cardstock pieces, I decided just to color over it with the ice glaze stickles glitter glue so that you couldn't tell. And then I added the blue bow down with a glue dot after letting the glitter glue dry. And this finishes off the last card, number 15. And here is a picture of all 15 cards that I made using six sheets of the pattern paper from the Very Merry Paper Pad by Summy Studio. For the next set of cards that I'll be sharing with you in my upcoming video, I'll be using the Queen & Company's Magic Shaped Shaker Kit so that I can make a bunch of birthday shaker cards because you know I love shaker cards. And this is the paper pad that I'll be using. This is called Magical Adventure 2 by Echo Park. And I'll just quickly show you the different patterns that come in this paper pad. A lot of these patterns are directional. So I want to make sure to pick the ones that aren't so that I don't have to worry about which way it's facing. I mentioned that earlier in this video. But I will use some of the cutter parts that you see here and even some of the other patterns in this pad. But I'll share all of this with you in my next video. But I am getting to the part where I show you how to use the cutting templates. But as you can see here, there are some great patterns in this paper pad, some stars, some dots some checkered patterns, even some fireworks, 
and I, I will be using this red sheet here with the castles on it and I'll show you that here shortly but uh, I just love this paper pad and I'm excited to show you the cards that I make with it so here are the six papers that I removed and I've assigned them to each of the papers A through F here's the patterns that I'm using for A and B and then here are the patterns that I'm using for C and D, paper C and D, or three and four, I should say. And I'm showing you both sides so that you can see that I, I do have some options here. And even though they may not look like they go together, they will once I tie it all together with the, all of the colors that are used in the paper pad. And then these are the last two papers, E and F. So when choosing your papers, you just want to make sure that the papers that you pair together have coordinating colors or patterns on either side. So now I'll show you the best way for cutting the papers using the templates. Because this paper pad has an extra half inch of print at the top where the hole is, the first thing I need to do on all of these sheets is cut that off. But definitely save those strips if you have paper like this because you can possibly use them somewhere on the cards or replace some of the smaller pieces that may not match. Now for paper A, you'll want to cut off the end first here where it's, it shows the scissors at one and a half inches. So I'm just going to put my paper in at the one and a half inch mark and trim that down. And then you'll want to take that strip and turn it and cut it at three and three quarter inches. So now I have the big piece that's on the left hand side. And so I want to make that second cut at two and three quarter inches. I'm going to take the far left piece and turn it. And then I'm going to cut off a one inch piece off of the bottom. And both of these will go into card sketch number one. And then the strip that's left. I'm going to cut at one and three quarter inches um, to make a one and three quarter inch square. And that will go in card sketch three. And then the one below it goes in card sketch five. And what I like to do after I cut each piece is I go ahead and I place the pieces in the numbered cellophane bags. And that way I have it all organized. I'm not going to do this on camera. So you don't have to watch me do this for each piece that I cut. But I did want to show you the first one at least so that you could kind of see my process. Now for paper B, after cutting off that little half inch strip, first you'll want to make your first cut at four and a half inches so that you will have that one and a half inch piece on the right hand side. And then you'll want to take that little piece and turn it and cut it at two and a half inches. And then for the large piece that you'll have on the left, you want to cut this at three inches next. And then you'll want to turn that middle piece so that you can cut it at three and three quarter inches. And then for the far left piece, you will need to turn it and cut it at four and a quarter inches. Then you'll turn that bottom piece and cut it at one and three fourths of an inch so that you'll have your two pieces for card sketches three and 15. For paper C, the back side has this striped pattern. So I want to make sure that the stripes go the opposite direction on those two three quarter inch strips that I'm using for card sketch six. So you'll want to make your first cut at four and a half inches and then you'll turn this piece and cut off a half of an inch from the bottom. And this little bottom piece will go with card four. Then you'll cut this strip in half so that you have two three quarter inch strips. Then you'll want to turn the left hand piece and cut this at three and three quarter inches. And once you have that pretty much cut, you will want to turn it again and cut it at three inches. And these two pieces will be for cards three and two. Then that bottom piece, you'll cut at two and a half inches. And then this will be for card four. 
then you'll cut the other piece at one and a half inches. Leaving a half inch strip piece for card 15. And then the piece for card four, if you look at the template, you'll see that it actually needs to be trimmed down to two and an eighth of an inch. So make sure you cut that off of the two and a quarter inch side. This is probably the most complicated cutting template that's in this challenge, but um, hopefully that made it a little more simple for you. Now for paper D, the first cut you want to make is at one and three quarter inches after you cut off the little half inch strip if your paper pad has this. Um, so you'll want to cut it at one and three quarters, like I said, and then that's going to be the, the right hand strip that's shown on the template. And you'll want to turn this and cut off a half of an inch off of the bottom. And then you'll take the left hand piece turn it and cut it at two and a quarter inches. And once you do that, then you'll take the bottom piece and turn it again so that you can cut this piece at two and three quarter inches. And then you'll turn the little one and a half inch strip, turn it and cut it at two and a half inches. And you'll be left with the little banner piece that will go in card four. Now for paper E. This is where I plan to use the red castle pattern on card 10. So I wanna make sure that the paper is cut so that it will be facing the right way. So since my scissors show that my first cut needs to be across the bottom, I need to turn my paper and cut off the one inch bottom strip. Then I'm gonna turn that strip and cut off a one inch square. This leaves me with the top piece where I'm gonna cut off the two and a quarter inch strip on the left. And then I'll turn this strip and cut it at three and three quarter inches. And then that will leave the top piece for card nine and then the bottom piece for card 15. And then for the final piece of paper, this one is pretty straightforward. It only has four pieces. So after cutting off the little half inch strip, you'll wanna make your first cut at two and a half inches. And then once you do that, you will turn that piece and cut it at two and an eighth of an inch. And then you'll wanna cut off a one inch strip off of the end of that bottom piece. And that does it for paper F. Now after sorting all of the pieces into the cellophane sleeves by card sketch number, my next step is to take matching colored cardstock and cut all of my mats and layers and decide how I want to decorate each of the cards. So stay tuned to my next video to see how they turn out. I hope you will join us on challenge number five and share your creations with us on Facebook, Instagram, and or YouTube. Now something new that I want to mention with this challenge is that if you happen to have a YouTube channel and you share a video of your creations on YouTube using the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 5, you'll get two entries into the contest rather than just one. Remember, you have until March 31st of 2022 to create your cards and get them posted. Also, please join the Facebook group Kendra's Card Challenges, where you can share your cards, ask questions, and see what others have created. If you think you might give this challenge a go, leave me a comment and give this video a thumbs up. I'd also love it if you'd share this challenge with any of your crafty friends who might enjoy making a bunch of cards and also having a chance to win lots of prizes. I appreciate you watching all the way to the end of this video. I can't wait to see what you create and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.